Hi and welcome to Maximilian Photography. My name is Maximilian and today we're going to talk about UV induced fluorescence. Now when we think of the term fluorescence probably most of us will think of black light and crazy colors that are produced by that light source and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Black light is called black light because the light itself is invisible to our eyes but it still produces colors that fluoresce and therefore show up, we can see them and it just looks crazy and pretty cool. Now, to fully understand the process behind this, let's take a quick look at the theory. The visible light spectrum, the light that we can see, goes from around 380, 390 to 700 nanometers. The longer the wave, the less energetic the light ray is. And as the light rays are less energetic than 700 nanometers, then we can't even see them anymore. This is infrared light or near infrared. And just above the visible spectrum, just faster than 380, 90 nanometers, is UV light. And there's three different types of UV light, A, B and C. Um, but let's not get into this. It just means that we cannot see UV light rays. These are just too energetic for us to see. But as these light rays hit an obstacle and get reflected, they lose some of their energy in the process of reflection and therefore now become visible to the human eye because they fall within the visible spectrum from 390 to 700 nanometers. The effect of fluorescence is around us all the time. The sun has a fair lot of UV light rays that it emits. But there's all the rest of the spectrum, so the rest of the ambient light just overpowers the fluorescence and we can't see it. But what if we introduce our own UV-only light source? And this is very well possible. We can modify a speed light to only emit UV light. And then we could take pictures like this, or this, or this, which actually was taken with this plant just a couple days ago. Now in part 2 of this video I'm going to show you how I modified the speed light. This is what it looks like and I'm not the first one to do this and I might be the first one to use a Pringles can for it. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of fun to play around with, make sure you check that video. And for now let's just have a look what these little items that I gathered here will look like underneath UV light. Now that was pretty exciting, wasn't it? It is just such a fascinating and cool color palette you get within the spectrum of fluorescent light. Now, these items, I, I didn't pick them because they are so amazing for UV photography. I just picked random things to show you how cool this is. And I had a little bit of fun with that plant here yesterday and I just poured down some tonic water, which is another thing I forgot to mention. It fluoresces like crazy in a cool color of blue. And so I put it down on one of these leaves here. I think it was this one. And I produced this photograph. And it looks abstract, right? But it makes you want to look at it and figure out what's going on. And it, I still find it pleasing in a way. And it is so much fun to play around with UV photography. That's just the point I'm making right now. And yeah, you can take photos of insects, of anything really. I took these photos earlier. And it just shows off how crazy cool colors you can produce with UV light. Now that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed the content. I really hope you feel a little bit inspired. And yeah, if you want to see how I made this little adapter thingy right here, check out part two of this video. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you found this useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.